Welcome back to another episode of Love of Pages. This is Geek Elite's virtual book club podcast where four friends get together and torture, inspire, generally intrigue each other with our favorite reads. Mm -hmm. I'm Elizabeth, and as always, I'm joined by the lovely Naima. Hey there. The lovely Jessica. Hello. And the lovely Steven. It's me. And this week, we are starting my new pick, Rebel Queen by Michelle Moran. So this is a a historical fiction. I I stepped away from the detective novels for a brief moment. moment. We went went historical fiction. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a nice, nice even blend between the history and the fiction. Um, Our main character, I have no reason to believe, is an actual historical figure but it is set in very real historical times Mm -hmm. a lot of the lore is from the same time period it's kind of built into that folklore of the time Mm -hmm. Uh, it is entirely set in India um, at the start of the British not the start of the British, but the start of the British rule, like the real crackdown of British rule in India is probably the best way to put it. So I'm going to hand it over because, as always, no book club is complete without sufficient libations. So, Naima, what are we drinking tonight? We are drinking. I want to make sure I get this name right because we did go through a few different drink options. Um, but this one is the Indian Summer. Um, and I think I think it, it is pretty like on the nose with this is a summer cocktail. It's basically a like mango margarita <laughs> kind of thing. It's vodka, um, mangoes, not no juice, not concentrate, just purely blended up mangoes, which I almost made the mistake for. Um, mint, lime juice, sweet and sour, and then of course ice. Blended up till this beautiful like speckled yellow cocktail here. So how how are you? What is your thoughts on it? I like it. Um, mine's probably thicker than it should be because I went real <laughs> hard with the mangoes because mango is my favorite fruit and always will be. Mm. But like when this came up and it was like India, what type of like cocktail do we go with for India? And mangoes came up and I was like that one, mm-hmm. bar none, that one. <laughs> so but fresh. The mint keeps it fresh. The mangoes. They're really bright. I probably would put rum in it instead of vodka, but that's just a preference for me. So I, I think I'm with you. I think I definitely would do vodka or do rum over vodka in this, um, or maybe even a gin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. For me, I feel like the ginger and lime overpower the mango in terms of a sweet bitter balance. Yeah, the gin, not so much. It also might be that I put way too much mango. I did not look at the measurements <laughs> for how much mango to put in there. I just cut up like a good three quarters of a frozen mango. Um, but no, it, the ginger's kind of just like a back taste for mine, at least. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Jessica, what are you drinking this evening? So I was totally for a mango margarita concoction because I also love mangoes <laughs> to no end and ginger and lime. Um, but unfortunately, I, I was having some tum-tum issues earlier and I was like, okay, a super fruity drink, probably not the best idea. So I am drinking peppermint tea with a sprig of cinnamon. Oh, that's a good decision. That. Listen, she I know, lo- right? I, I do know my medicinal <laughs> teas pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are fully on par with this book and just generally like India culture. You've got medicinal tea trying to solve something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> tea solves everything. I don't know what you're tea, tea solves, solves all things. And Stephen, what are you drinking this evening? Uh, I have Japanese Pepsi, Japan Cola, Ooh. and it's a big Japan one. Cola. 600 milliliters. <laughs> it's good. 
<laughs> it's, it's a slightly Purple. more cinnamony Pepsi. Ooh. For being our original tea person, I'm a little disappointed that you didn't opt for tea. No. I gave you an excuse. I, I, no. Not, not for this one. I didn't feel like tea. I listen. I, my entire life has changed, like you know, over the past like week, in general. Uh, like I, I, I just started a prescription for Adderall and stuff. I am not. I like. I am not doing anything mellow right now. <laughs> I am riding lightning. Got it. All right. Understood. Understood. This makes this all makes so much more sense now. <laughs> The world has now been has now been cleared. Um, so I'm on. So. I am on amphetamines. Amphetamines. <laughs> so with that, um, how's everybody feeling? We we did half the book. Mm-hmm. We got through the end of chapter thirteen. Wait, is that where you guys stopped? Sixteen. Oh, dude, I totally went to sixteen. Yeah, same. 16, sorry. Okay. Sorry. 16. I was like, oh no, oh, I can't. No. There's so much I can't Things say. Things happened after chapter thirteen. <laughs> so much happens. Um. I so, how's people. everyone feeling about the book? Yeah. I like it so far. Just like from, it's not what I expected, especially just from the title of the book. I guess I just assumed that we would jump right into conflict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, oh okay cool like i knew obviously just you know from historical things this is a british versus india thing that was going to arise and it's just like <laughs> and, yeah my dog knows about the conflict she's very <laughs> not happy with it <laughs> um, but uh, i liked the back the sort of i guess uh, like camaraderie thing that they are building up prior to that. Like, like this isn't a story about like a war. This isn't a story necessarily just about like the India's Joan of Arc in her like combat role, but more of like how she became that person, who she was before, how she was with, you know, not an army. Mm-hmm. Also, I really like the idea of, I didn't know at least um, that there was sort of a female guard for the queen then and it, it it gives me like Dora Milaje like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Wait, this, the, the name the name even yeah, yeah. yeah. the name's close too yeah the name is and I'm gonna butcher it as always Lord somebody else can pronounce it go for it I'm looking for it and I can't find it, but if I could see it. I, I can't I can't scroll to anything. It's an audio. I can't scroll to anything. I'm doing audio. Okay, well, so okay, in, in this situation, are three of us doing the audio book then? Am I the only one doing paper? I will go buy it tomorrow. I am not doing well, it. The, the You're reason, a good doll. After yeah. That. Yeah. You're a good doll. For this one, though, um, I think I honestly would have prefer doing this one as an actual book so I could read names for this one mm-hmm. because the person the person who is doing the audiobook for this one it's absolutely the, the best choice and everything like that they're doing things with an accent and everything um, the only thing for me in this one is that it's so true to it that I'm losing a little bit of like a, a the words don't necessarily sound as unique in in my mind as I'm hearing them because they all just kind of sound like word I don't know each time. Um, so it's more context clues that informs yeah. like people people's names and things like that in here. It's not a thing that happens a lot with me with audiobooks, but every once in a while this will happen where I would have at least liked to have read like the first couple chapters of something and gotten down the pattern of words a little bit more. That's a failing of my own. I like just having looked up just the book just so I could look for him of the guard and finding out that her name is Sita, not with a Z, it's with an S. And the an entire S, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feel like it started with a Z. <laughs> yeah, like even um what is the the I feel like I only knew that because I've read other books written by Indian authors and that I've seen how their spelling is. So I knew Sita was spelled with an S. Mm. But but I do kind of get what you're saying, Steven, and the fact that I'm like Okay, K okay, lady, or like, yeah, like, okay, that's like, wait, who's that again? Oh, that's that's like the 
the king. Oh, okay, got it. Like, yeah, it like them. this guy. Con- yeah. Context clues are doing a lot. Yeah. Wait, yeah. What is the, the the name of the, the lady? I can't even think of this right now. Um, we we, we all read up to the actual end of chapter sixteen. Yes. 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 The the lady whose son dies at the end of chapter sixteen, or uh, dies, and then she's mourning him through chapter sixteen. The Her the lady. The no, like the Rami? Like, ty- thank you. Rami. That's the one. Yeah, she- I couldn't remember that that word even in that in like in that situation. Like that one sticks out. It's so short. It's right there, Rami. and obviously you're going to hear about this character a lot as you're reading it. But still, it's it's just like that is it's memorable. Other ones, not necessarily as much. I'm just going to throw this out here. Ronnie sticks in my brain. Raja out, and I know he is such. He's a good character. <laughs> He was a very good character, but like for some reason, just in my brain, that name, and I'm assuming probably, I don't know correctly or incorrectly, that those are titles, not names. Um, yes. As of the context yeah. Yeah. they're using. King is completely like not in my brain. They say it every time, like every couple of pages, and I'm just like, oh, no, no, yeah. I know now because he's like fawning over his wife, but he's also dressing up as a woman every day. So, um, there, there, there was a part in there where they were talking about in, in the beginning of the book, they, they had a little preface that was talking about the fact that they were going to, for kind of like ease of consumption, I guess. Um, yeah. they, they changed a few things here and there. They would yeah. refer to this country as this, or, um, this Which title is- would be shortened a little bit, you know, like kind of, kind of like dropping honorifics if you're translating something, uh, from Japanese, like yeah. things like that they were dropping. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I appreciate it. Like you, even the, the, the same thing goes for game of Thrones, game of Thrones as a person who didn't watch or read game of Thrones in a big way. I knew like two people's names and I didn't bother to learn anyone else's. I had enough context clues for other like other things that were happening that I didn't need to. It's not limited to just this culture or any one culture. This is just me. In high school, I knew plenty of people, and they were just called, hey. <laughs> no, I appreciate that very much like Game of Thrones, with people who are like, ah, oh, yeah, Khaleesi's her name. It is not her name. That's a title. In her name, stop naming your children this. I yeah. mean, go ahead. <laughs> but like, you do, or, but. or maybe don't with how things turn out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're like talking all about. All those but, people that name their child in season seven. No, I don't know what you're talking about. No, <laughs> Just, we we don't know what happens at the end. They they never finished it. Mm-hmm. Oh right, they never yeah. finished mm-hmm. it. Did never they? It. They it's, wish. No, no, we're not <laughs> getting a Justice League, a Game of Thrones season eight. I'm sorry, this is Dude. it. People Done. lose their no minds. Snyder bullish cut. People would be so happy if that happened. No, they wouldn't be no, because wouldn't. whatever it ended up being would not be what they had wanted it to be anyway. They're just going to wait for him to bring out the like book. 300 times to get a sufficient number of people who were happy with one of the versions. I mean, this part's fair. It's why we're not getting a se- like a season two of Lovecraft Country. But I digress. A book, you say. A book. So, favorite character so far? It's not Sita, that's for sure. She's <laughs> okay. <laughs> because Sita is my favorite when she's with a grandmother. Because I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any other time. What are you, stupid? <laughs> I like Sita. It's like, I like, like, in, uh, oh my God, I, I'm going to butcher it, but it's like Bahar, wherever she's from. Her there, like, with this new confidence, on point. Beautiful. <laughs> That's, like, a person that, like, grew up and was like, you know what? I know. <laughs> like, I'm not dealing with this anymore. Mm-hmm. But she takes care of her little sister. You know, being married at nine isn't great. But, again, different time, different time. Um, <laughs> um, but and at I, least she took care as to who she was going to marry. Yes. Yeah. And then, gentle soul. Again, I think 15. Yeah. Like, okay, like not great, but like not like third. So, <laughs> could be worse. <laughs> could be yeah. worse. It could be much worse. Yeah. Much, much It could be <laughs> significantly worse. I mean, they were trying to send Sita off to basically be a church prostitute, which is the first time I have ever heard of such a thing. <laughs> I've heard of it. But I heard of it in other mainly fantasy novels, novels, stuff like that going on, but I knew where it came from, that whole idea. And it's just like, 
I but know it, I've had family members not get along with me, but I don't think I've ever had a family member that I thought they would sell me into prostitution if they could. <laughs> trying to think, but I feel like I could find a family member. Like my, my, my dad's side <laughs> okay. of the family is mostly business oriented. If they could make a buck off selling me into prostitution, I'm sure they yeah. would have. It's cool. I get well, it. If they're like, Maybe I am being too kind <laughs> then to some of my family members. Like, if they're thinking of you as a burden, you have no other use. They're like, yeah, it's a couple dollars. Like, we'll be fine, you know? But like... <laughs> Oh, okay. well, well, when the first option was poisoning you, no, no, it's as an cool. infant, you it's can better. be a church prostitute or a regular street prostitute. And frankly, they'd prefer the church prostitute, even though there's like whispers and everyone still knows what you did. At least it's for like God. <laughs> I, I did like that. They actually went into that stuff in the beginning when she was first being told what, when she was little, how much uh, effort a person went to, to actually make sure that she was still like around having this kid was not an easy task. It yeah. sets up the destiny thing really well. Cause she does mention that later. She's like, you know, I wonder what type of match my father would have picked for me. Had my destiny been different. It's like, yeah, no, no, no. They kept you alive. You no, know, you had to be threatened by grandma a bit. Like she couldn't like you. If she liked you, this wouldn't have been your path. So, <laughs> but like, I liked Zita then the rest of the time. No. Um, I think I, what's the name of, Oh, I'm so breaking. Kind of her budding love interest that she's not allowed to have a love interest because she can't have kids and they can't get married and he has a he's a widow. Uh, abre, abre, no. I got I'm I'm so bad with the names in this one, guys. It was I really to close to on. another name. Yeah. So her love interest that keeps giving her really books close to her father's name. Yeah. yeah. Lo- love him. He's good. And then also Ronnie, but everybody else is meh. Yeah, the, the, like I, I, I want to get out ahead. I want to say mine was the Ronnie. Yeah, like and then later on, her actions at the end where she's like she gives her the necklace. She's like, here, have your sister wear this. Yeah, mine's the, probably the Ronnie, but I wanted to go more into the the neighbor guy that actually trained her with her dad. Uh, mm. Like that guy, I think he's pretty legit. Like I'm like, yes, <laughs> train <Choke>. her. <laughs> Uh, I forgot about him and that makes me sad because he's awesome like he was like all right okay fine so we'll we'll give up these like 17 other things that you're learning like he is the kind of neighbor you want when you have kids it's like no 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 go ahead and teach them 16 languages archery horseback riding and a whole bunch of other stuff in the course of like five years it's fine Hey, that's also what? free. That, that's free babysitting <laughs> plus life skills that they're teaching your kid because that's not like a thing you learn an hour a day like that's a full and- day and that's the person that you go, yeah, my youngest could be your daughter-in-law. Like, <laughs> but- go ahead and arrange that marriage. I have no problem with that. <laughs> like, like, again, could have done much worse. Mm-hmm. Much worse. Like, at least you know the quality of people that your child is like. Um, yeah, but like, I appreciate that, like, people who pick their own matches have done way worse. <laughs> like, also valid. Also, that, like, Very valid. <laughs> I mean, there are, there is something to, at least, you know, if your family really hates them, depend depending upon the relationship you have with your family, obviously. Yes. But if you have a good relationship with your family, and your family hates your significant other. At least think about it. <laughs> <laughs> With arranged marriages, well, listen, as long as it's free will, like, you came to that willingly, and mm-hmm. also, like, you know, as lo- like, that's that's someone doing the vetting for you. <laughs> I don't know about that part. I feel like they don't have my best interest at heart. Because if my, if my parents had chosen who I was going to marry, it would have been drastically different. <laughs> what are you talking about? They just would have waltzed in there and no, been like... I, I would have I been married when I was, like, 16... <laughs> To some like very like I don't know like cr- like very boring person who just is very Mormon and I don't know maybe knits only with their day like that's their only hobby. If it's it, she could knit a baby Yoda. No, but she can oh. knit. No, the part's fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with knitting, but if that's your entire identity, it's sad. I know probably the exact chick you probably would have ended up marrying. <laughs> in Casa Grande. Well, the, the Mormon church was across the street from uh, the high school. Uh, yes, yes. We know who went and left. 
like, and I remember like I was in dance class with half of them. So like, as soon as we graduated high school, half of them were engaged and like popping out a kid. So I was just uh-huh. like, whoo. Yeah. Into name I will omit here. Like, I just I got through my sophomore year. Can you wait a second before having a baby? <laughs> just, just saying, <laughs> my life would have been drastically different. My parents would have picked Mitch. So, <laughs> <laughs> imagine, but imagine if that wasn't one that you had come to on your own. It would have been basically this guy who lives like just a couple blocks <laughs> over from me. He's a good deal older than me. And, like, he works on the military base. Like, that by I'm itself here. sounds I'm like here. your parents picking a bad match. That doesn't mean it's not a good match, but it sounds on paper like a bad match. And they basically threw a rock and found wh- whoever it hit, the rock hit. <laughs> on paper, to me, it just sounds like stable, mature. Like, the things that your parents <laughs> would be off for you, minus any, like, shared interest. Like, you gotta find that on your <laughs> job. No, 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 fantastic. Sweetheart. No, no, he's got all the stuff. He's a sweetheart, great beard. Like, there's a lot here. Like, (laughs) please share this portion of this with me. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, you want to know what it would have been? Relatively calm. Mm -hmm. Put up with a lot of shit. (laughs) Yeah, you can do that too. Very intelligent. Mm -hmm. Kind heart. Aww. Can take a beating. Okay, we're good. This <laughs> part for the wedding. Can you just flip that video out? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and choose. Like, this, the, I'm I'm the one who is who is wedding the two of you. So this is great fodder for me right now. No, Man, that would have that would have been my parents' list. Like, is he smart and can he put up with her crap? Check, check. We're good. Okay, <laughs> moving. On. This list was B is. So long as he doesn't beat her. That is my father's qualification. <laughs> I mean, we're doing great in this regard. Forever. Because he wouldn't pick anyone. I was like, this person's not going to beat me. He's just like, eh, I don't like him. I'm just like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> I was like, I'll just die alone. This is why this would not work for me. <laughs> so is there a particular least favorite character? Oh wait, Jesse, your favorite character? The British. Oh, yeah. No, no, oh. I th- I thought you no. Said I thought the, yeah, no, the, neighbor, the, the neighbor. The neighbor. I went. Yeah. The neighbor. Yeah. No, the neighbor guy. Um, the British. The British. The British. Just as a whole. Yeah. The British. I was thinking more individual characters, but yes. <laughs> the oh. ladies walking around in their parasols, still getting red like lobsters. They're like, just come. On. You can do better than that. Um, no, what's her name? The chick who broke basically her her wooden culture her wooden carving her father made because i would have like that's poisoning time like that's that's yeah. we're fighting that's, that is like <laughs> Cal- <laughs> we're Cal- Cal- Calisa. Oh, it starts with a k it does start with it, a k Calisi, calicia or something like that calicia <laughs> but like I'm of no for, i need to be able to see right. these names this is the problem if I, I, can't, yeah. I can't see it nope. <laughs> I, but like and I listened on like a faster speed too oh, in order no. to have time to listen. So it's I did not all do this. I did not do this one. I think that's blasphemy. Honey. The honey. Yeah. Yeah. The honey. She There's no reason. Like Shadow and Bone, you've all watched him. She reminds me of that chick that's just like well, I'm from a better family and you're dirt poor and I hate you for absolutely no reason. No reason. <laughs> like, it's not like you haven't suffered enough in life. I'm just sprinkling on the hate because I don't understand you or just because it makes me feel better about my this is- probably horrid background. I don't know what went on in her lifestyle, but knowing that like she's related to the, to the, to the Maharaja, to the king mm-hmm. and obviously not obviously he is um he likes men i don't know if that's like his thing if he likes both if he's just like eh, like i don't i don't know his deal as of this moment mm-hmm. <laughs> but like it seems like that would be time period wise and also being in that family would be hard enough as is just because he's supposed to be a king and yeah. he's supposed to produce an heir and basically, just from all of the other books that I have read, that falls very hard on, like, the other siblings where it's like, 
you need to make sure this happens. It's like, why do I need to make sure this? Ha-? He's the one that needs to make the baby. Like, what is this my problem? And it's just like, well, you're the female. You need you need to like encourage your brother, cousin, whoever's in your family that's apparently male and can't do anything by themselves. You need to All somehow make that happen. Which yeah. is what she does, because she yeah. does plot a way for Ronnie to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. So yeah. which is um, so very smart, but I still don't like her. She's just being mean for no reason. Oh. <laughs> well and then that and you get her background over why like she had to be like why she's mean emotionally and it's dumb because it's literally like she was engaged but she was sending letters to another man like so her engagement cut and then she had to be part of the queen's guard Mm -hmm. basically and i'm just like that's it though like the grandmother who is an utter horrible person at least had to have four children murdered and (laughs) just (laughs) Like all this, and it's like you you made your own mistake and got caught in it, sending mm-hmm. letters. Like, and your only repercussion is that you get to basically live in luxury for the rest of your life. Yeah, like you didn't actually yeah. lose anything. Now then, like true love is true love, I guess, and we all do dumb young things, but like. He could have made another no decision. Sympathy. That man, I mean, granted, they both probably would have ended up in poverty or dead somewhere, but like she could have Romeo and Julieted it if she really wanted to. <laughs> yeah, that's just it. Like you could have gotten around that, but you didn't. And now you're just gonna be insufferable to everybody. Cause it's not just Sita she doesn't like. She is it that way to everybody. Yep. I, even the Ronnie's like sort of perception of her so, like I get it. She's annoying and insufferable and you know she's all of these things, but she did me a solid, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Although she does, she does provide Sita's, I think, best line through what we've got pretty early in the book, when it's it's basically the the second day when Sita is there and she had advised her to be like overly humble. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. and she delivers the line, yes. You can't have snakes in the grass, or you can't have snakes when everything is grass. Yeah. And then I like how everyone else after that were like, listen, mm. it's only those are the only two snakes in the grass. Like they just keep with her thing. And I'm like, that's them. <laughs> right. They're friends. Those are enemies. You know, you know. <laughs> that's when you know you've delivered a good line. Like when it <laughs> catches, you're like, yes, you have delivered a good line. Um, but so. Because I'm realizing I haven't done it. Big plot. Um, Sita is born in a village. Impoverished. The lowest caste system. There is there is nothing in life for her. We open with the scene from with her. What ends up being the birth of her baby sister. And grandma basically discussing the fact that girl babies are useless and nobody wants them and they should all be poisoned and killed. Her mother dies giving birth to her sister. And so her grandmother attempts to take her to become a pre uh, prostitute. (laughs) Yeah. You can't have two daughters because you can't have two daughters. Um, Dad steps in and says, Oh no, not happening. Not happening. Not happening. Were you going to say a bad word right now? I was. I was definitely going to say a bad word. (laughs) So dad hatches a plan with the neighbor and trains Sita to join the Darmal, Dardal? I still don't The guard. Drugadal. Drugadal. Drugadal? Drugadal? D-U-R-G-A space D-A-L. Yeah. Drugadal. Uh, which is the Rani's guard. And the Rani would be, for lack of a better term, Queen of India. Yeah. Which, as gets discussed in the book, is a British term, and nobody in India understands why they use that term. Yeah, I like that they, they, say, they say in there, like, they insist on calling her that. <laughs> Whatever. So they train her in, as discussed, a bunch of languages, chess, archery swordsmanship all of those things they prep her for a test 
and she gets selected to be the newest member. And so she goes to court and is kind of bombasted with this life of luxury and all of these new rules. And for the first time in her life, she's got a little bit of freedom because, as is discussed, she was living in Perda, so she does, does not leave the family home. She does not see men outside of her father and the one neighbor. Sounds like 2020. No. <laughs> yeah, she's basically in quarantine her whole life. Wait, uh, I, I, haven't seen a, I haven't seen one neighbor in, co- <laughs> in COVID times. I haven't met these neighbors. Uh, and, you know, and then we follow kind of her path about learning to deal with court and the court system and the brewing unrest and then towards the end of the section, the big piece is the Ronnie gives birth to a son who then gets very, very sick. Mm-hmm. Sita cures him. I think that is the end of 16, which brings her all sorts of positivity. In the interim, she ends up having to go home. Uh, they arrange for her younger sister's marriage to the neighbor's son. And... She has to confront her grandmother, who was her biggest bully as a child. So, I do think this is I a little I bit after, all- but I think it's okay. No, that happened. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, she- okay. Because it happened before it, the baby was born. It happened before the baby thing. Yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So you read the baby thing. Because <laughs> that was, was when. Was- Oops, sorry. When, uh- <laughs> when sh- it was thought that she and two others had a plague that didn't exist. Yes. So they had to be away from the pregnant Rani for a month. And then a she month. Thought- doctor. That thing bothered me. Like, she obviously, she knew. But she, she knew. She was like, you can't I do anything. Of her because she helped. It's like, she's obviously, like, poison. <laughs> she helped me get pregnant. She just told you to wear man clothes. Like, you would have gotten there, honey. And you now would. you already know how to do it. You don't need her no more. She would have done. Like, you go to enough plays of your husband, you know, gear starts. <laughs> or somebody else could have easily come up with that if you would let them in as to what was going on. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'd have needed to murder that person. Like, I mean, like, at least from all the things that I've read about, like, royals and gossip is, like, it needs to be in the family or that person gets murdered. <laughs> There's no loser. Be- being in the family and doesn't necessarily preclude you from the idea of it being murdered either. Just putting that part out You also need to be impacted by it. So should that have come out, then also what's her name would have been impacted by it. And so that wouldn't have helped either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that makes in the game too. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have skin in the game. Yes, that is the most important part. You have to have skin in the game. Yeah, I- so those are the big plot points. Any predictions? I, well, I think England is going to take over India for sure. <laughs> Proud of you, Jessica. Proud of you. Thank you for catching that. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna put twenty dollars on that one too. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm sorry. I, feel I don't like, feel like anybody's gonna bet against that. They, they bet against in, they, they bet against England. No, I don't think they really did. I think they knew and they were just like, like, what if we just like wait it out? And they're like, what? And it's just like, if we just like pretend it's not happening. It's like, isn't that basically what she's doing with the the English sol- soldiers that are like letting them use guns made with the fat of pigs and cows? And they're like, you can't do that because they're holy to them. And the English are like, well, it's like, that's and crazy. then she's like, well. I don't know what to do now. Like, I guess I just let them do it. (laughs) It's her response. Instead of like, you know, engaging them, inviting them, trying to come to like some diplomatic thing. It's like passive aggressive letter back. It's like, I'm sorry. They're rebelling. Tough luck. And it's like, what was that? (laughs) I appreciate her. I feel like she's very strong and we will get to a point in this book where obviously she now has a son. You know, that sort of weight is off her back of like, I can't die now and then everyone's ruined type situation. But she's able to take a more forefront type role. But I also do think that there was sort of foreshadowing in like the first couple lines, pages of the book. I mean, for me, it was like first couple minutes where obviously we're seeing the way in the future and she's recalling 
her relationship mm-hmm. with them. And I, I feel like th- there's, um, there's got to be, there's some things in there that I don't remember exactly because it was, you know, 16 chapters ago, even though the chapters are pretty short. Everybody. They're very short. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, there's something either to do, I feel like, with her sister that comes that becomes important later. Yeah. Um, and I, I want, I don't have any predictions about that, but I am interested to find out how that unravels. Cause obviously her sister's going to get married or maybe she won't. All of these things are very big questions. For me. Personally, I have no, I have no big predictions or anything for this one. I'm just kind of like letting it happen. Like that's just how I deal with historical fiction. Uh, I think it's a lot of the person to person stuff that you could foreshadow because or like predict because there's so much that you already know happens um there's there something else i was gonna say at some point here i oh no um what elizabeth do you have any predictions for this one i'll say something after i i can't give any predictions uh, since i have read the whole book before um <laughs> so while i'm rereading it with you all it would be unfair of me to make predictions <laughs> no, make the wrong predictions um no i the thing that that i think i i was most surprised by was that while looking stuff up for the book in general online because i was trying to go through like recall some names and stuff like that because i very much wanted to be prepared for this one and i knew i was not with those names um there's like nothing online for this like it's, I don't know if it's a book that sold really well. It seems like it did in some regard because someone's out of the sales. Um, but even people reviewing it personally on like Goodreads, which is always there, there's not a single reader review in there. Yeah. So yeah, no. Um, really? Yeah. Michelle Morgan has has done a number of books all in the same vein. Mm-hmm. Um, of different historical time periods. And I very much enjoy her. I happen to have come across her randomly, just kind of perusing the stacks at the bookstore uh, and got hooked. And I enjoy the way she writes, Mm -hmm. which is how I ended up to this book. I don't know that it ever really did. I mean, it was never a bestseller. Mm -hmm. It didn't, you know, pick up any big awards. I just happen to think it's, really solid interesting historical fiction about a piece of history that most people don't focus on Mm -hmm. like yes we we all know the british invaded india and colonized it and you know all of that stuff but very Mm -hmm. few of us i feel have ever really dived into that history Mm. that's true as i'm now I looked up the name of the actual queen just because I needed to know, like, were there other books written? Like, is this the sort of thing that, like, because I did see that there wasn't a lot on the internet, Goodreads. It was given four stars. I like it so far. I feel like the people who have discovered it or taken the time to write a review have liked it. But I needed to a little bit more, obviously, yeah. uh, giving myself spoilers because I'm reading more into the history of it. And I tend to do this to myself, but it doesn't ruin the story, so it's fine. But, no, there's some there's some divergencies here, which... Is fun. I, I like. I sort of like that with historical fiction. Like she's telling the story of like a person, mm-hmm. and like trying to pick up on all of like the things and the stories that are told about that person. Versus, I feel like that's a big thing with historical fiction. At least sometimes it's like it's not necessary to get all the all the facts right because then you sort of lose the ability to like keep the fiction there because like you don't get to tell a story. You get to just be a history teacher yeah you're, you're just telling <laughs> events events yeah how, how do we feel because this is slightly different than most of her other pieces how do you feel about our main character not being the main historical figure no that that's fine that gives oh, you I like that, gives that you, storytelling actually yeah, it gives you license to have more happen personally Makes I, the I'm hysterical like, yeah, figure seem more very real. Feels. Yes. And, and it, she is real, uh, but like, yeah. Real. <laughs> and I think it adds to Naima's point about the fact that, because you get divergence, and with any historical figure, you're going to have 
divergence. And so if you're not having to try and have that be your character and have the internal monologue and try and decide what they're actually thinking, you can simply write an individual's perception. Mm -hmm. Which is basically all we have now because it's history. So. So. All right. Any other final thoughts? I didn't think I would like this book and it's not, um, it's, it's mostly, it's the same thing with the last book. It's book covers. I'm a hard proponent of not judging a book by its cover, but I cannot say that I do not do it. <laughs> yeah. <Every> it's <laughs> book. <laughs> so like, I, I'm happily surprised once again, but it's just like, guys, don't judge a book by its cover. It's good on the inside. You just got to like, to her in that first page. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, your cover is different, isn't it? Can mm-hmm. you show your cover again? Yeah, yours is farther away. Ours is up close. Yeah, that's a better cover. Uh, that was a lot better of a cover. Both of these covers, to me, scream included with Audible subscription. Like, that's uh, what... Yeah. yeah Which your, okay, yeah, your, your, your cover definitely reads romance yeah. romance novel in a historical setting. And this definitely Honestly, reads no, much more historical fiction do, to me. You, you know what this yeah. cover this cover looks like to me? This cover looks like puzzle game based in this culture in 1995 on Windows. <laughs> no, no, where, where you're yeah, like choosing yeah, objects in the background game. of something. Like those current games that they have that are in that setting. Sultan something. I can't remember what they're called, but I get ads for them all the time where you're like trying to become a concubine in the palace. (laughs) Oh, God. America's interpretation of what everyone's walking around India looking like. It's like they don't wear saris. Like this is. (laughs) They don't wear saris every day, guys. Uh, Every day. (laughs) That's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. Well, fair enough. Any other last thoughts? No, no. Th- thank you for yeah. choosing one that is a different kind of thing. And Naima, where can people find you at if they want to judge, uh, talk about judging books by their covers? Oh, easily. So I am on <laughs> Instagram and Twitter as at Ema Janan, and also on Instagram as other places, other pages. And Jessica, where can people find you to discuss the medicinal properties of tea? Oh, we can always discuss the medicinal property of like pretty much anything because I have so many books about it. <laughs> but um, because I'm a fantasy writer, that's why, guys, it's okay. <laughs> this is a serial killer. Yeah, you can tweet me at JM Bailey Writes. And Stephen, where can people find you if they want to discuss the uh, 40s Mormon lore? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me all across the internet as some version of Peppermint Gentleman. For Twitter, that's Peppermint Gent. Uh, if you're going to come try to talk to me about Mormon stuff, bring bring your facts. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me with the rest of Geek Elite Media at Geek Elite Media and our Facebook page forward slash Geek Elite Media. Archived episodes of this podcast and other podcasts can be found on our website, geekelitemedia.com. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get this podcast. It really helps others find us. And if you've got a couple extra dollars, jump on over to our Patreon page, Geek Elite Media. But until next time, this is the love of pages, reminding you to keep turning those pages. And always remember to... Geek out. Geek out. Geek out. <laughs>